Hi, this is Shane reporting for Green Left TV. We're at the University of Tasmania where tonight climate skeptic and all round good guy Lord Mockden is giving a lecture to the faithful. Lord Mockden is currently in Australia, it must be an election year, to promote his own brand of climate skepticism. We hope there will be a little bit of action this evening, so let's hang around for a bit and see what transpires. I heard a little bit of your interview um, this morning on ABC Radio. Um, will you be sort of covering the same, the same material? Yes, my subject is threefold really. It's the carbon tax, the climate scam and the UN's Agenda 21 environmental programme. And the question I'll be asking is can democracy survive all three? I'll give you one example of that. The Greens, when they realised I was coming to Tasmania, issued a statement this morning in which they said that I should not be allowed to speak on the university campus. So you can see that exactly the kind of control that was exercised by the fascists in Germany before Hitler came to power, the same kind of control as was exercised by Lenin and his lieutenants in Russia, by Mussolini in Italy, that is the same kind of control the Greens are now trying to exercise here by saying that I should not be allowed to speak on a university campus. Teams of them will ring around the universities. If I'm invited to speak uh, on climate science or economics to a faculty or to undergraduates as part of a university course, letters will come from all over the world saying do not let him speak. Now why would they do that? If I am some kind of driveling idiot then I will hang myself out of my own mouth. The whole idea of academia is to allow everybody to have their say. I'm not whipping people up to any kind of violence. I'm not preaching, preaching hatred or racialism. I'm just talking about scientific equations and economic investment appraisals. On any view, there is no excuse for any of these people to try to prevent me from speaking at universities. But they do. Oh. That is disturbing. You know, Tasmania is the heartland of the Greens. Of course, but even so, uh, if that is the heartland of the Greens and that is how the Greens behave, then what they will gradually be doing is taking a stranglehold over the life of Tasmania. For instance, if you want to build a house, you need bricks, yes? There used to be a brickworks here. The Greens came along and said, we don't want a brickworks. That brickworks had been here for a hundred years. It was shut because they demanded that it should be shut. And now, if you want bricks, you have to ship them hundreds of miles from mainland Australia. So now, in addition to their food miles that they're always going on, we now have brick miles as a direct result of the totally mad, totally nihilistic behaviour of the Greens. And so what I'm saying is, it's time that they realised we will not allow democracy to be shut down, we will no longer allow our businesses to be closed by these people, and if they continue to tell lies in the name of enriching themselves and bankrupting working people, shutting down mines, shutting down farms, because they think that that's what they want, if they tell lies to do that, then in future they will be prosecuted for fraud and they will go to prison for a very, very, very long time. Lord Moncton, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm here at the UTAS Lecture Theatre, Stanley Burberry Theatre, where representatives of the Flat Earth Society are ambushing the good people coming in to hear Lord Moncton speak tonight. I'm here with Kerry. Kerry, why are you here tonight? Well, we're certainly not here to ambush anyone. We're here to to invite people in so they can hear Lord Monckton speak about the travesty and dark arts of peer review science, something which leads to other false, false beliefs like a round earth, which again is supported by the travesty of modernity that is Google Earth. All these are conspiracies and Lord Monckton here is a force of, of reason in this dark world. And I'm talking to Alan, who's oh. come along this evening uh, to hear Lord Monckton speak. Alan. What are you hoping to hear from Lord Monckton tonight in regards to uh, the climate science? Oh, I don't think it'll be anything new. He's been saying the same thing for a while. Do you believe that the government has a responsibility to act on climate change, if they can? Oh, indeed. If they can, yeah. If they can. 
So if it's not caused by carbon dioxide, there's really not a lot the government can do. Yeah, I would say that was that's a fair comment. Yeah, sure. But if you know, if some clever people can think of uh, something they can, they can do to uh, mitigate climate change, um, well, good, let them do it. Yes, we're here to show people that yes, the work of, the work of climate scientists is the work of the devil. The trickery that they put out in the so-called peer reviews is nothing more than a tissue of lies from the blood of Satan. And uh, we're here to let you all know of the um, great travesty that they that NASA collaborating with many foul fiends in the scientific community are trying to convince us that the Earth is round. And at many a time. They doctor photos from the dark dungeons that they come from of a round earth. But for if it was a round earth, we would fall off. <laughs> You've obviously come to hear uh, Lord Monckton speak tonight, the famous climate sceptic. Uh, what do you hope to hear tonight? We'd just like to know what he's got to say. That's all. We don't, you know, we're just interested in to hear what, what, he, what his thoughts on climate change are. There are people that have written letters to the university that have tried to stop him uh, coming to Tasmania. Do you think that's fair? No. Hey, don't believe the lies of climate scientists, mate. Uh, right. I think everybody should be given the opportunity to express their views. Hey, and uh, there's a lot of mixtures around, aren't there? So let's uh, see what uh, comes out of this tonight. Uh, he obviously doesn't believe it. Um, a lot of people do, though. Yep. Do you believe in climate change? <laughs> I have uh, mixed feelings about it, yeah. a reservation, so uh, the, really broad, the broader... The Some of the things that are happening today happened when I was a boy, yeah. you know. Against strange, new, controversial addendum like round earth, like a climate that can change. Does a leopard change his shorts? I'm so glad that we had this opportunity. Can you see the brochure as I put it here? Whoa, it's trembling a bit. It's the wind. I'm here with Rebecca at uh, University of Tasmania where Lord Monckton is speaking tonight. Do you believe in climate change? Uh, I'm leaning towards that side, yes, but I'm not you know, 100% sure because there's a lot of science involved, obviously, but uh, I am leaning towards yeah, that sure. side. We have representatives of the Flat Earth Society here tonight. Yeah. Do you believe the Earth is flat? No. <laughs> the Earth is flat. Yeah. <laughs> Climate change is not happening. You're going in to see Lord Monckton tonight. What are you hoping to hear tonight? I think I'm hoping to hear uh, some views that perhaps we, we don't come across every day in, uh, in Tasmania. Um, we all have an opinion on, on this subject, but it's, it's good to hear every end of the spectrum um, and everything in between. And he's obviously very vocal about uh, what he believes. It'll be interesting to see what he has to say and how he tries to perhaps win over the audience. Sure, sure. Do you believe in the climate science, suggesting uh, that there is climate change I, I studied environmental <laughs> studies uh, within the School of Geography oh and Enviro Studies here at the university and uh, a science is a science. I find it very hard to disbelieve what the majority of the scientific world has to say about this. Do you believe the Earth is flat? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I'm here with John Hunter, a climate scientist. John, you've turned up tonight to um, just watch what goes on as uh, people front up to hear Lord Monckton, the uh, world-renowned climate sceptic. How do you feel about him appearing at the uh, Stanley Burberry Theatre at UTAS? I'm pretty negative about him appearing at all at the university, I have to admit. So I've actually complained about it to the university. Um, a lot of people have. Um, uh, it's not, I think it's appropriate for somebody like him to be talking here. Someone like Lord Monkton, you mean a climate sceptic? I mean somebody, well for start, he, uh, one of the words in the title of the talk is climate scam. So he's basically saying that people like myself are frauds, we act fraudulently. And I think if somebody comes to university, they shouldn't say that... Um, and I must say, to our costume, they are opinions do not. God bless you all. Oh, bless you. No, it's a peer review science. 
Yeah. We were just discussing before we were rudely cut off by Lord Schmuckton. Um, we were discussing you wouldn't debate climate science yeah. with Lord Monckton because his arguments are basically flawed. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, you can search all over the web and you'll find debunking of uh, his science, so I wouldn't even bother. Sure, sure. But climate we, change is happening. We know it's happening. There's uncertainties, there's uncertainties in everything, but we, there's certain things we know for, cert for sure. So, for instance, we don't know that the, the best guess of what's going to happen isn't that nothing's going to happen. The best guess is that something's going to happen and we're going to get warmer, sea levels are going to rise, but we don't know exactly how much. Sure. So that's what we mean by being unequivocal. Sure. Sure. If you could strap Lord Moncton to a chair, coat him in honey and pour ants over him, just before he screamed, what would you say to him? I don't think I'd want to say anything to him, actually. I think just making fun of him is probably the best thing. I mean, he's not... You shouldn't take him seriously, full stop. Thank you, John. OK. Thank you.